we start with the male system first. The male reproductive system is generally quite simple in contrast to the female reproductive system. Let's talk about its most important structures. First, we'll talk about the testes. I'm going to circle that over here. Or highlight here, here. Okay. The testes, singular T-E-S-T-I-S, -E but if plural, we say T-E-S, T-E-S, testes. The pronunciation will be slightly different. We pull the E at the back. Singular testes, plural testes. The testes are the gonads of the male. They are responsible for producing sperm cells. They also produce the male sex hormone testosterone in large amounts. When the sperm cells are produced, the sperm cells will then be held within the coiled tubes or epididymis. The epididymis are generally nicknamed coiled tubes. It's a bit hard to see here, but you can see it on this side over here. The epididymis does kind of look like it's quite coiled up. So these are where the sperm cells will go to mature. When the sperm cells are first formed, they are not mature yet. They will mature within the epididymis or coiled tubes. Now, if you notice, there's something special about the position of the testes. Compared to most other organs in the body, the testes are located outside the core of the body. They are held within these two sac-like skin pouches called scrotum. The scrotum is the name of the skin pouch that holds the testes outside the core of the body. This is important because sperm cells cannot develop properly if the temperature is too high. And it turns out that our normal body temperature of approximately 37 degrees Celsius or 36.7 degrees Celsius is too high for sperm cells to develop properly. They need to develop at a temperature approximately one degree Celsius below our core body temperature. Therefore, they are held outside in the scrotum. However, what if the outside is very hot or if it is very cold. The scrotum has the ability to move the testes. There are contractile muscles in here that can contract or relax depending on situations. If it is too cold, if it is too cold in the outside, then the testes will be withdrawn closer to the core body to warm them up. If it is too hot, then the testes will descend even further so that they are away from the core body. Okay, let's now talk about what happens when the ejaculation process begins. So first, what is ejaculation? Ejaculation is the process by which sperm cells and seminal fluid mix together and flow out through the penis in a forceful spurt. Now, there are two words I have used here. Sperm cells are cells. There is another component called seminal fluid. When these two combine together, the mixture is what we call semen. Semen is the relatively white colored substance that comes out from the penis during ejaculation and it contains sperm cells and seminal fluid. So what's sperm cell doing in the seminal fluid? Seminal fluid is a mixture. It's mostly water, yes, but it also contains a lot of nutrients that help the sperm cells survive. Not only that, they contain some antimicrobial components that can kill germs to a certain extent. It's not very strong, but it is enough to kill germs directly lying outside the penis or within the vagina where it is meant to be inserted into. The seminal fluid also has slightly alkaline pH. This is to neutralize the acidic environment of the female vagina during sexual intercourse so that the sperm cells are able to survive. So where does the seminal fluid come from? They come from what we call the sex glands. In the male system, there are three different types of sex glands. Listed in this picture here, we have the prostate gland, the cooper's glands, and the seminal vesicles. Now I'm going to trace the movement or the path of the sperm cells. First, the sperm cells that are already in the epididymis will move out through the 
vas deferens, also known as the sperm duct. Now, if you don't call it vas deferens, it's okay. You can just call it sperm duct. I'll just write the name vas deferens over here. That's its alternate name. The vas deferens is the Latin name for the sperm duct. The sperm duct's job is quite simple. It is merely to allow the sperm cells to move out from the epididymis and they move here. Now notice that the sperm duct loops around the ureter that comes from the kidney. The sperm duct actually carries out peristalsis in order to propel the sperm cells very quickly, very fast. Now, here, where they meet together in the middle, they're going to join up with this tube. This tube is known as the urethra. The urethra is the same urethra used for urination. As you can see, the urethra in the male has two purposes. It's connected to the urinary bladder up here. So urine passes through the urethra. Sperm cells also pass through the urethra together with the seminal fluid. So what produces the seminal fluid? Once more, the sex glands. If you are required to know the specific names, then here are the specific, specific names. Prostate gland, Cooper's gland, seminal vesicles. The Cooper's gland and the seminal vesicles occur in pairs somewhat. You can see them here and here and here and here. The prostate gland is one big gland, kind of like a donut shape, although you can't see very well from this picture here. There's a hole in the middle that allows the urethra to pass through. It's like a tunnel within the prostate gland. These three glands actually all produce slightly different things from each other, but you only need to know that all of their secretions combine together to be called seminal fluid. Importantly, seminal fluid contains a lubricant as well, so that the sperm cells are able to move very easily. Once all that is mixed together, we call it semen and it passes throughout the penis. Now this is a side view, the side view of the male's reproductive system. You will need to familiarize yourself with both the frontal view and the side view. You can be tested on labeling the parts, either using this side view or the frontal view pictures. Okay, right. Now if you are wondering whether sperm cells may ever enter the urinary bladder or if urine may accidentally go down the sperm duct into the testes, that should not happen. There are valves in this area that prevent urine and sperm cells or semen from mixing. It is not possible for the semen to go back up into the bladder. It is not possible for the urine to go down into your testes. Also, you can't ejaculate and urinate at the same time. The valves also prevent that from happening. So although the urethra is used for two different purposes, it can only do one at a time. Okay, so that's the male reproductive system.